Hey, dude. Okay. Can't hear, hear me you. now. I hear you now. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can, can you hear me? I, I was hearing you before. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what you did. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me, you prick? I wanted to see if that would work. I saw okay. somebody do that on, on IG going. I can't fucking stand you. Like, this is really like true. It's facts. I don't like you. It's facts. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, dude. Things have progressed. Oh, don't tell me good news. Oh, of course not. <laughs> you know, this whole world, whole planet's on fire right now. You know, look at that. Yeah, but uh, hold on. Big C for Trump. I like that. No, oh. Cubs, you crackhead. Oh, Cubs, that's right. Was that a rat in the, in the middle of it? It's a bear, you smoking that's a rat cracking. The that's a bear. That's a bear. That's that's a bear. It looks. It looks it's like. Sh- it looks like the a ni- kangaroo. It looks like a kangaroo with a bat. It's the nineteen. 19- 14 Chicago Cubs logo. They 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 must have had not good artists back then because that's not a bear. A it's 1914. Bear. They were all probably I don't know eating lead paint. I don't know. Most likely sucking on some kind of lead lollipop. Yeah. I want to try a different image. Try a different image. Different image. Different image. Yeah, so I guess this was a good precursor of uh, trying to help my mom out with her LinkedIn. I was able to do the the logo here. Gotcha. So uh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do any backgrounds right now. Why not? Um, it won't let me. I have to figure it out. What do you mean it won't let you? Yeah, it says my computer doesn't have enough, like the graphics card. I have an old oh. Mac, so. Oh. Old MacBook Pro. So. Uh, well. I might be able to get in my new one, and a, and a Mac iMac that I have here, but I don't go on that very often. So I got you on my laptop right now. Mm. Yes. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm extremely exhausted. Who are you telling, brother? I, I was about to take a nap. Uh, I can't. I, 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 the first guest I had this morning, I promised her that I will have her episode up by by tomorrow morning because she just launched a new, um, a new online course, and so therefore, I told her I would get this get this done for her. Yeah, I will, at least I always give a week lead time. I always tell me it takes a week to post. Yeah, guess what? I'm not that nice or smart. Yeah, because that's editing and yep. doing graphics for it too to promote it. Uh, no, no. Luckily, I don't have to do any any graphics. I'm not that smart like you. Oh, I don't. I don't have. Uh, Weird. I wish. I wish I had more of that um, skill to be able to do to do uh, graphics or or video. To be able to edit video, um, I, that's something I really want to be better at going forward because I think I learned a lesson um, this past weekend because I jumped on an Instagram Live with the New York City Dads group. And I, I really think I need to do more, more video. Yeah. You do. So no doubt audio is a piece of that, right? And you can still extract the audio like I do from the videos. Right. Um, but you're going to have to definitely include some videos, man. You have to. This is becoming like, right now what we're talking, this, talking about is probably much, like, pretty much like a social content one-on-one, right? So right. if you do video, you can break it up to three, to three different factors. You have, of course, video, audio, and you have transcription as well if you want to transcribe it for a blog or whatever. Um, video is cool because then you can actually dissect that footage into clips and post different clips and intrigue people to come see the whole video on YouTube or direct into your podcast so they can continue hearing it at work. 
Oh, that's dope. I liked it a lot. That's awesome. Oh, that's shoot. Fantastic. No, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Gosh, darn it. That's good, though. You have you uh, need to make one that's a, that's a kind of corner. You know what I'm saying? Well, I could, oh, well, I could do, well, I don't know. It'll take me a while to find is the one you did. Um, but going back to what you're saying, yeah, I, I want to be able to do, um, uh, you know, it's if, the same if I freaking can do one. It, I've been learning video doing it on my, my own for the past five years now, four, four or five years now. Yeah. And it started with Lovely's channel. Lovely's uh, right. channel is what preempted me to go ahead and learn about editing. And I, and at the beginning was very, very rough. Didn't know what I was doing. Got into Movie Maker. From Movie Maker, I discovered, you know, as you continue to learn things, you, you notice what you need more of. You don't know what you're missing. Movie Maker was just fine for me at the beginning. And then I realized I need, I need more. And then that's when I, I hunkered down and bought the actual Final Cut Pro four years ago. And they still get free updates, which is fantastic. That's why I love it. And I've been using it ever since. Um, well, it's funny. I was... Um, somebody on LinkedIn reached out to me and wanted to chit-chat. We were going to be at the same place, but unfortunately our schedules weren't going to be uh, cohesive enough to actually meet in person. So we were talking. There's the one I want. And we were talking about, she was talking about uh, launching a podcast. There we go. That's the logo I want. And one of the things I had mentioned her was talking about you specifically, because for video, I really think that you have to have a really strong personality. You have a great personality for video. I, I don't, I don't like video. I like doing this, what we're doing right now. But knowing you, because uh, you're going to turn it into audio and I can use the audio. I, I don't like video for me, pers- for me, because that's not my personality. And, you know, we've talked about and other podcasters have talked about, you know, you have to go with your strengths. And my strength is the writing in, in the audio. And right. because having a radio background, helps me with you video is very strong because it go it matches your personality now like i was just I was saying i really had a good time as as a third wheel watching the new york city dads group doing their live instagram uh video and it it sparked me to do one yesterday and i was like you know i need to do more and i actually did a little video this morning and put it on Instagram, mm-hmm. just saying how my day's been going. I can do that. That's okay. But having the ability to go into, what is it? Um, I'm looking at my icons at the bottom of my Mac. The um, What's the video platform I'm, I'm drawing a blank here on? What, a Mac on Final Cut Pro? But not Final Cut Pro. Like, Movie Maker? Uh, Movie maker, yeah, iMovie, iMovie, iMovie. iMovie. So iMovie to me is very complicated. I've done it. I don't think it's been successful. I've done it, and I, I, I guess I just need to play around with it more. Or yes, I don't have a problem just going on Instagram and just you know doing an Instagram live. So this is what you do. This is what I did. So yes, you have to play around with it. Click on stuff, figure shit out, break it, right? Right. Other thing, too, is YouTube is your best friend. So whatever you actually want to do to your content, YouTube it. So let's say it's just a title. Let's say you want to make a more graphic-y title type of thing in the beginning. Then YouTube it. And, and make sure you put Final Cut Pro in there because that's what you have. How to make a, a, a movie title for Final Cut Pro. And then for there, at that point, it's going to show you exactly where to go how to maneuver through it. And then from there, you can actually go start creating your own content for that title, however you want to go for it. Let's say it's how do you splice multiple images together or things like that. Again, type it into YouTube. You're going to get a tutorial. There's so much free information on YouTube. It is fucking insane. And it's also paid for information, right? 
And I think yeah. I've learned, and I'm still learning him now, is all through fucking YouTube. Like, even when, me, when I have my camera and recording something different, I'm recording outside, I've learned how to record through YouTube. Like, hey, how do you make a short film? How do you make a documentary? You know, and I'm, I'm looking at, at people's angles and how they maneuver things. Or I see, like, even especially with Lovely's channel, Lovely's channel, I I've, was able to be very creative and use a lot of that footage. Like, I would be in the middle of Atlanta on a bridge and I've recorded just B-roll of, of traffic. Then I want to use that, tra- that B-roll traffic for her actual video for the beginning, right? So there's so many things you can do different, especially, you know, Colorado, dude, when it snows, let's get some B-roll is snowing. Can it just, of it just collecting on the ground, I think it's just rise. And from there, you can always speed it up, right? And add right. that to your video just to make it look, you know, more intense and just gives people more visuals. Uh, even with the video I'm, I'm editing now, I have video of us driving, you know, in the car. So I took the sound away and now I have this footage of me on the highway driving. So okay, I gotta stop you there. I gotta stop you there because I, I wanna go back to what you were posting on Instagram this morning. Yeah. And you were using, fever? <laughs> yeah. So take what app were you using and, and what was what was the thought process of using a, a new app? So I'm using something called Firework, which is pretty much like TikTok's competitor. Okay. It's very similar to TikTok. Um, they did contact me and they wanted me to do a couple of um, videos for them. And I'm doing, I'm doing a few more tomorrow and posting them and see if I could be an influencer for them. Um, the other one I have is the, other vid- the video creator I'm using is called Gemini, G-E-M-I. And allows you to use both cameras at the same time. One looking at you and one looking at your subject. So, which is really cool. And, and you don't need to have firework to use Gemini, but it's pretty cool um, to use that. So let's say again, if you want to capture, let's say you're behind someone, you want to capture your expression compared to their expression. If you're trying to surprise them, you can capture that because it uses both cameras at the same time. So um, that's how you're able to do that today with... Me driving you, and talking. On, on, yeah, and on the top you had driving. Yeah, the, the scenery, and at the 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 bottom was you. Yeah. So you got to see my destination and me moving at the same time, and you got a feel for where where I'm at. Yeah. You know, so I want to use that more. There's also a different portion where it's just my my face in the corner and the bubble, and then mm-hmm. the rest of the screen is actually my you know, my environment that you see that I'm, I'm looking at as well. So I'm going to do that next part tomorrow. Uh, is this about, you know what? Right now it's about being creative and testing shit out. I got to say though, you know, in the beginning of this whole epidemic, pandemic shit, um, I lost my creativity. I got real lazy. Really? I got in a huge fucking funk. And, you know, just because dealing with, with family stuff, financial stuff, of course, like everybody else, getting kids, you know, Acclimated to the new school, <laughs> which is home, which I'm, I'm in, you know, the teacher's lounge right now. Right? <laughs> As you can see, right not, me, you know, says, having you know, a drink. Get, yeah, get shit done right there. Right? This is yeah, our vision board, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so doing all that and figuring out, you know, all right, where am I going to take this thing? You know, what's, what's my creative niche? Because I'm always every year trying to figure out what's my next thing, especially with, with Johnny Nomad, period. And the goal is just to keep on being consistent, keep on putting content out, but but making sure that I'm keeping people intrigued, right? So decided just to get out of my funk. The other night I just had I've never had panic attacks. I never had I've never been a person of anxiety or anything like that. I never had anxiety, never had panic attacks. I remember you told me that you had one when you was in LA, you know, trying to get the fuck out of Dodge. Exactly. And I gotta tell you, the other night. When I said the other night, I mean, maybe, was it Friday night? I think Friday night. I woke up and I felt I couldn't breathe. Right? I tried opening the windows. I put the AC down. Like, I was like, put the AC, like, you know, on fucking 60-something. I said, like, it's too hot. I felt like I was, I was being trapped. I felt claustrophobic. I've never had these symptoms ever in my life. You could put me in a fucking cardboard box, I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. And I just felt all this at one time. And I, I stood up. I didn't sleep for over, I think, 27 hours. I just couldn't wow. sleep. I didn't go to bed until 7 o'clock that next morning. 
because I just couldn't shake this shit off of me. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on? I said, I never felt, I never even went out to my patio back and forth. I just needed air. I just needed something. I needed space. And, um, you know, my wife was like, what the fuck's wrong with you? You know, Lovely was like, what's wrong with you? You're not like this. She said, jump in the shower. I was like, all right, yeah, let me just jump in the shower. Jump in the shower, take a cold shower. That helped for a quick second, and then it, it came back. It didn't take care of nothing, really. And this went on for about, and this, was, this went on all fucking night. And I got kind of nervous, and then that added more to my anxiety about me being anxious, about being anxious. Right, right. Yeah. So, and I, I didn't feel comfortable going to sleep. I couldn't sleep. I felt like I was choking the whole nine yards. It, just, it was just really fucking weird. Never felt any of this in my fucking life. And it came to me. You know what? It kind of just hit me all at once. You know what? You're subconsciously thinking about all the negative shit that's happening. Oh. You're, you're blocking everything internally, building these, these walls like fucking Minecraft, right? You're just building all this shit. You're no, I don't know Minecraft. Sorry. <laughs> it's up. And you, you know, you're putting everything in a box. You're putting it away, storing it. And it, everything kind of fell, fell, out, fell off the shelf. Everything kind of unraveled and un, unwrapped itself. And at, at that same time, it's going to hit me. That's, that's when I said, you know what? I can't worry about worrying about shit. Mm-hmm. I just had to go ahead and focus on getting shit done. Um, making things happen and really get into my creative space again and really tapping into that more than ever before. I that, will tell you, fun. I've been the opposite of that because I don't want the world to get into my head. And my day, for example, today, my day started at 5 in the morning because right. I had um, the first uh conversation I was going to have was going to start at 6.30. So I want to make sure everything was ready. Then the next one. And then I knew I had to sit with my mom uh, via Zoom. Yes. Uh, so I, as I told you, I signed up for the Zoom uh, account. So it was good practice for me, good practice for her to learn how to use LinkedIn. Uh, later on today, I'm actually speaking to a, a coach to try and get me moving forward. And one thing I, I really want to ask you, uh, so I'm excited that we're doing this again, Johnny. And, and so sitting here, listening, talking to you and hearing about your story about the anxiety attack and how uh, the creativity juices were gone. I started thinking about this right before we start recording is that when do you get to a point where it's time to stop? And like I said, I scheduled two podcast recordings today. One was an epic fail, technical difficulties left and right. And think, starting to think going, when, when do I stop this? And so, Cause you were talking, you were talking about, you know, getting the opportunity to be a, an influencer. That's a great step for you. But if you didn't have that opportunity, when, when, or if do you just say, I can't keep putting out free content. I can't keep doing this. I, I've got to, you know, just shelve it. I don't think you do. I think free content is, is what you have, right? So you're looking at, this is what you want to do. So give it to the people for free, Right. What you want to look at is other avenues to monetize yourself. I don't want to never monetize my content, right? So as far as my podcast, my YouTube channel, put it out there. It's for everyone to see for free, however they can capture it. It's everything else aside from that as far as monetizing it. So if I come up with a product and I get my, my, my people, my, my, my followers to buy that product, then I'm monetizing that. But I'm still going to feed them my content for free. Right. So I wouldn't say stop at all. I would say don't focus on the money right now. Focus on putting out quality content the best you can. Then look at other ways to grow your follower base based off of marketing. It's going to take your real job, which is your everyday job, to fund it. If you fund, just ha- just right now it's a hobby. It's a hobby until you start making money with it. Right. Right. The wife, the wife is not going to say, "Hey, this is not a hobby," until you make money from it. What? Can I eat this? Yes. Okay. Sorry. 
<laughs> as you know, when you got teenagers at home now. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, they sorry. Go on. Yeah. So put the free content and find a way to make money off of your brand that you're creating. So blending the family, what does that mean? Right. You really have books. Mm-hmm. Are you promoting your books? Are you giving it justice? Are you promoting your books enough? Are you really I'm sorry. I'm there? sorry. Did you did you say hold on? Did you say did did you say books? Hold on. Oh, it's you know, it's, it's lost, it's blended. It's blended in the, blended the thing. Yeah. All right. See that look, look, Tommy. Someone's waving this... to you. Hi. Hi. Is that lovely? That's lovely. How's she feeling? I'm good. <laughs> She's good. 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 <laughs> Speaking of teenagers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, so I think what you have to not worry about is just that, right? Everyone who's making money on YouTube, they're not really making money off of YouTube. They're making money off of other things. So they got either deals or they got sponsorships, and, and that's what they made the money off of. And honestly, you, have to, you also you have to pull your chain a little bit and say, how consistent have you really been? Oh, I will, I will be the first to tell you in, in, in my experience, yeah. And it's funny because... I got a a LinkedIn instant message from a guy saying, I want to start a podcast. What, what advice would you give me? And that's, that's number one right there. You got to be consistent. You have to be putting out, you know, at least, at least one episode a week at minimum. And I I will be the first to say, have I been that consistent as of late? Uh, About 90%, but that's still not good enough because it's exactly what you were saying. You have to be consistent. You have to. Um, and it's funny because uh, one of my past guests, um, Michelle, oh, I can't remember her last name, but on Instagram, she is a divorce diary show. Uh, find Michelle and talk about consistent. And I started thinking she puts out a lot of content, a yeah. lot, like, like Gary Vaynerchuk. And I'm going, I, I feel that's, there are times where it's too much, but then in, in my situation, I'm not putting out enough. So right. again, it goes back to your exact point is you have to be consistent. And I will, like I said, I'm not. And, and I, I think this is where people have to understand too, right? So as humans, we do two extremes. Either we do absolutely nothing, zero, and we talk a lot of shit about what mm-hmm. we're going to do, or we go balls to the wall and we just over inundate ourselves with so much additional pressure and commitments we really can't handle. So to your point, start off with one episode a week, whether that's video or audio, however, whatever you want to do, one episode a week. Once you see that you're getting some good followership, you're getting good feedback, then you can decide, can you really pull off two episodes a week? Mm -hmm. And then when? You want to keep the quality up. Now, you're putting two episodes a week. That's that's, that's additional content you have to come up with. That's four more pieces of content for that month you have to come up with compared to the month prior. So how do you come up with that additional content? You have to be more creative. You have to use technology to benefit you. Like for you to say, like, you know, you're unsure about the whole video piece. You feel like you don't have the personality. I think you do. I think you sell yourself short a lot, right? So the, the days of just having a radio face, I think it's over, right? Even radio shows are putting their radio shows on podcasts. Yep. And, and they're, also video. Video, yep. they're also video yep. recording it as well, yep. right? So the DJs are still doing their thing. And someone's just there recording them. And they really don't give a fuck. Right. You need to do the same thing. Just for, put the camera on. Just record. And put it out there. You know? Um, and that goes for anybody out there. Some people say, hey, is it too late to get on YouTube? It's saturated. You know what? Everything's fucking saturated. Even fucking buying soap. You want to be a soap maker saturated. Don't say, shut up. <laughs> right? So, even if, even if you want to do that, it's saturated. Everything's saturated. It's about how do you carve out your niche in that space? How do you carve yourself? How do you place yourself in there? I'm not trying to be Howard Stern. I'm not trying to be Joe Rogan. I'm trying to be me. And that's really it. And you need to be who you are. And continue going. Now, if you see yourself making money off of something different than your podcast, and it makes more sense to pivot because that's where it's going, then by all means, pivot. Right. And I, maybe, I agree. And maybe... You're not the face of a podcast, but maybe you're running a podcast. Or maybe you're showing people and you're making your money based off your knowledge of radio and podcasting yourself. And you're in the back end producing podcasts. 
mm-hmm. where you may hire me and say, you know what, I want you as a face. I'm going to write all this shit for you. I'll make you look sit nice and pretty, but I want to run this motherfucker in the background. You know what I'm saying? You have backstage hands for a reason. The actors are the actors. The people who build the set, the people who are backstage changing the sets and closing the curtains, a lot of those motherfuckers, the actors don't know what the fuck scene they're in. Mm-hmm. Right, but so this true. is where people have to understand where they where they're going. I think Tim Ferriss last year, he stopped taking sponsors on his podcast. Yeah, he for about he six stopped month test. He stopped. Yeah, and he, he strictly went that. to Patreon. Yeah, and that was when people were just gonna. He said, "I'm gonna try this out, and I, I, and if you really want to help me out, sponsor me by giving me your dollars on Patreon." Yeah, and I'm not sure how the result worked. I'm not sure if he still it, has it. It failed. It failed. It failed. Okay. And um. It was a really, I mean, as you already know, Tim Ferriss is a walking experiment. Right. And that was his, you know, experiment to see because the one thing I really loved about that that uh, experiment is something I struggle with is, you know, putting sponsorships on, on the podcast. Does having a sponsor, especially if it's something that is just there for money and not in your... The, that you don't feel good about, but you're making money off of. And so Tim Ferriss said uh, that all the sponsors he tests and he believes in, but he did feel that the sponsorship was detracting away from the message. And so when he did do the, uh, the different, I think he had like three different levels uh, that to pay for uh, the podcast. And he came back, uh, with sponsors because it didn't work. And so, which is, I think too bad, but at the same time, I'm happy he did it because it does show that you're not going to get people. If you just put like a, like a a donation or a PayPal button on your podcast uh, website, people like free. People like free. And that's where our product comes into place. And like I said, which is a book. Like you have. So Ferris has a book that has what a million pages in it, you know? So yeah. he has many books. It, it comes down to that. Once you have a following, what product can you come up with to where that following is going to purchase? I'm sorry. Did you say book? There you go. You say, there's, that's the kid's coloring book. And then there's my on, first one. That's Look the at first that. one. That's the like, first one. Like that needs to be on a t-shirt. You need to put that on a hat. You need to have keychains. I'm going to, okay. So last year I started, and I think that uh, I'm so happy we're having this conversation because I hope others learn from this. So I started doing that. I can't remember which, who's the one you recommended to me? I can't remember. For what? For, rec- for, for doing uh, drop shipping. Uh, it was uh, spring, I think spring tea had. Uh- yeah, I didn't use them. I used somebody else, and I can't remember their name. So I started doing that. I started putting – I created, like, a little store with hoodies and hats and yeah. coffee mugs and put the logo on there. And this goes back to our original conversation is that a lot of times it would come back to me saying the logo uh, – I'm not a graphic yeah, designer. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It, it didn't fit right or didn't couldn't be printable. Exactly. So, so this is where you have to look at, again, educate, educating yourself. Mm-hmm. YouTube's your best friend, so is Google. Right? That's number one and number two search engines right there. Is Google's number one and YouTube's number two. You have to look as far as how do you come up with graphic designs and what kind of JPEG or PNG you need, what kind of source or, or vector file, some of them are called as well, that you may need for the printers to be successful with. You also want to look at, depending who you're using, to to pu- to publish your 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 product as far as what kind of machinery they're using, what kind of files they do na- do they need, and then couldn't get those proper files. Sometimes that means you may have to hire someone on Fiverr to just convert your shit into something that's doable to where you pay them one time. Now it's yours forever. It's a quick investment. Now you have that file is good. You can print the shit out of it now, and you can take that to anybody else. There's things like that that people have to take the next step and it's not just stop. Let's say, and that's what I did. I stopped. Yeah. And you can't. You have to look at your resources and who you have. And you should have called me, dude. I would have told you. You know what I'm saying? You were bu- so, you were busy that day. I think you were. Oh, that day. Uh, uh, that day. You okay. had that thing. I don't know. That day. Let me see. What day was it? No, I spoke was, to you ever since then. That after that. Yeah. Day. Mm-hmm. 
See, this is shit I'm talking about. This is exactly the shit I'm talking about. This is the shit that fucking everyone fucking does. Is that we fucking stop. stop. We fucking stop. We, we, we talk good fucking game. We talk all the shit. We promote ourselves to everybody who's walking. And then we look that we didn't post nothing for fucking four weeks. Or we didn't fucking uh, get the fucking website up because of a fucking file. Mm-hmm. But then we're still promoting our shit. And then we're wondering why. Uh, how come I ain't going no fucking way? The reason why is because our brain has been literally drenched and saturated with what the fuck we want to do. If this is not what you want to do and you see yourself kind of drifting off, this is not it for you then. Don't do a podcast, don't do a YouTube channel, don't do anything in life if you see you're drifting. If you're drifting from that particular subject matter, that's not your subject matter. Plain and simple. If, if you like to fucking make lamps and that shit gives you a fucking hard on and every time you fucking touch a lamp, your fucking dick gets hard, that means you need to fucking make lamps. You know what I'm saying? That's your fucking calling. And before you know it, guess what? You're making money off your fucking lamps. And you throw away the podcast. All right, I'm going to stop you there because <laughs> I don't want to walk by one of my lamps now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to get some extra pur- Purell and just hose them down. But I, I, you're right. You're 100% right. And that is, um, again, to use podcasts as an example, you get people going, they're all gung ho, especially now. Yeah. You know, people are home and they're like, "I'm going to create a podcast," and they do like two or three and go, "This is too hard. I, I have to yeah. edit. I have to do what?" And it's like, yep. ah. and it's it's something that I think about a lot. That I don't take my own advice. Is it's the little things. So, have you? Let me ask you, Johnny. Have you ever been bitten by an elephant? No. Have you ever been bitten by a mosquito? Yes. It's the little things that get you, that bites you. So it's exactly what you're saying. So here I am. I'm trying to you know, create income, and I keep getting this funky message saying, your logo is not going to fit this whatever. And I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'm done. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I'm done. I just put a wall in front of me, and I'm done. But you're 100% right is that – you know, it's like exercising. It's like, you know, you, you do it, you know, a week, good job. And then you go, oh my gosh, my back hurts. Oh, my, my little toe hurts. Yeah. Oh, I, well, you make an excuse. Uh, Your schedule doesn't, you know, allow you, allow you to work out. Right. Listen, we can find a million excuses. And my thing is just be honest with yourself. Just say, yo, I don't want to do it. I just don't want, I just don't want it. You know, if you don't want it enough, I'd rather have you say that than, than bullshit me and lie to me. Mm-hmm then you put out some bullshit content every so often because you feel compelled that you have to because someone said, oh, by the way, you know, I like your podcast. I haven't seen you in six weeks. And then you say to yourself, like, oh, shit, someone actually listened to my shit? They were waiting for me? Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Because at the end of the day, people listen. People don't like to press the like button. People are not going to press the fucking bell if they don't want to. They're still going to watch your shit. And they're not going to let you know. They may not even put a comment. The people are so compelled to put comments and likes because they also want to be heard and seen. Right? You have to, when I first started my podcast, I know that zero people were listening. Because when I went into it and I saw two views, those two views is one for me to make sure it worked, one. The second mm-hmm. one, I wanted to make sure it worked again because I wasn't sure if no one had seen it. And then it got double digits. It got 10. 11, 12 views. Some, some I had a 106. The next time I put another video out, it went to 32. Or well, then it went down to 10 again. And I'm like, oh, what's happening? But that was giving me data about the subject matters people really care about and where direction exactly. I should Exactly. Right? Yep. So this is things you have to fuck with. And it's going to take a year, people. It may mm-hmm. take two years for you to figure out what's your podcast direction. I'm going to have another person I'm going to invite on, on Wednesday because she's free now, obviously. I have another person in Canada um, I'm going to uh, speak to, uh, hopefully, by, not this week, but next week. Get them on as well. You know, so how do I find my people as well? I just started DMing people. Mm-hmm. I DMed your ass, what, three years ago now, two years ago now. Mm-hmm. Shit. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So it's, it's just a matter of just doing it, reaching out, and not being afraid. And you find out why you're doing it. This is not your cup of tea. That's fantastic. Find your cup of tea. 
Well, it goes back to, um, so I was having this conversation with this, she's a psychiatrist, psychologist. I always get those two confused. Anyway, yeah. and again, she was talking about wanting to add value to her practice by creating this podcast. And I was saying the same thing to her is the problem a lot of creative people is they they do very well and then they look at numbers and then they go, well, I should have received, you know, a million views. I didn't receive a million views. I'm done. And so just plowing through it, you know, I look at my numbers. My numbers as far as downloads aren't great, but I, I still love doing it. I don't care that I had to get up at 530 in the morning to you know, uh, because the other person was on East Coast time. Right. And I, I knew the value because this person has been on the podcast before. So I know the value she was going to offer to the listeners. And it to me, that's more important than than numbers that uh, as I as I joke on, on when I end my podcast and I talk about Terry Crews and the story is Terry Crews speaking of Tim Ferriss. Terry Crews was on, was doing a live event with Tim Ferriss. And Terry Crews talked about how when he was in Hollywood and that, you know, somebody would get a, a role that he was up for and then somebody else would get another role that he was up. For, and he just was pissed going, I'm good. I know what I'm doing. And then he realized though, but hold on, that means there's another role available for me. So his mantra started to be, well, their success is my success, which I firmly believe. And that is, if I have a guest on the podcast and they bring value, that's their success. And if people go, well, I heard that interview on Blending the Family podcast, that's my success. And so I, I think that a lot of times we forget about that. We get into that too much. It's all about me. Where's what, what about me instead of we? How can we help each other? And so I I just look at again going back to one of your other points about stopping is because we get afraid to ask for help. And I, I'll admit it. I'll, I would be like I know I know that you of all people would be able to go. Oh, I know how to fix this. <laughs> Boom. But we're afraid to ask for help. A lot of us. And that's why we stopped. Do you know why we're afraid? Because we are afraid of success. Oh, yeah. That's why. Yeah. We are afraid of actually making it, man. We talk about the fucking cars and houses we're going to have and shit and the, and the award shows we're going to go to and we're going to be invited to. And then we look at that, we look at our wives and say, oh, I got to go pay this rent and mortgage. I'm, I'm just a normal motherfucker. And I'm not ready for that shit yet. You have to be. You have to say that you're successful now. People just don't know it yet. Right? If you don't call yourself out, make yourself fucking happy as fuck with what you're doing and talking to yourself every day saying, you're one successful motherfucker. I do it every day in the goddamn mirror. And I'm like, Johnny, you're a successful motherfucker. I would and say then, sexy motherfucker too. Well, that that's comes after the shower. Oh, right, okay. so yeah. So once you do that and you pump yourself up, now you have to get your weight up. And that means the work. You got to get the work in. The work is what's going to constitute the weight. Now once you get your weight up, let the work in, now you have content you can put behind you and say, hey, I have this body of work now. That's what it comes down to. Like, I, I, always, I always look at this very similar parallel to a music artist. They put an album out, 10, 13 songs. So that's what they really get paid for. Once in a while, you get an artist who gets puts out 20 songs, right? Like a double uh, uh, CD or whatever. But um, most artists put out 10 to 13 songs now. They get paid for that somewhat, depending on the contract. But they really make money off of stage performances, performing on stage, whatever app. That's where they make the money at, concerts. Well, guess what? They get money off of that years later, right? Because it's a part of a catalog now. They they have another second album 
third album, fourth album. Now you have this great catalog. If they're lucky enough to own their masters, they could really make a shitload of money off the catalog. If not, they still can make, get paid off of radio plays. So there's many ways that can kind of skin that cat again, right? And that's where us content creators have to look at the same way as far as the music business. How many ways can we skin that cat? Where am I going to make that top dollar? Let's say you and I just start to do our own show. You know how many people take a podcast on a, on, a, on a city tour? They're on a stage or a fucking couch and they're doing a podcast and there's people actually there watching them? That bugged me the fuck out when I found out about that shit. <laughs> so whoever started that shit is a fucking genius. Now everyone has a fucking, uh, some kind of live show. You know? I would, I've always loved John Leguizamo. Right? Mm-hmm. He, I remember he first came out in New York. He was on Broadway for his own one-man show. And I couldn't get tickets for it, but I was able to see it on video, VHS back in the day. And I always wanted to do that for myself, do a one-man fucking show. You know? It's something very simple, very just out there and just tell my fucking story. And I never got to. Kind of life get in the way. Right? I let excuses get in the way. I let myself get in the way. So now my goal is to within this year to next year is develop my own one man show, whether I put that on YouTube, right. Whether I actually get some kind of off Broadway shit in Atlanta over here, you know, in small little 200, you know, place I can do it in the schools are fucking closed. You know, the public school system can, can, can you hear me? Can I use your auditorium? It's empty right now. You know, <laughs> you know, especially now with social distancing, right? So do I do a one man show now and put it up there? You All know? right. So on Instagram, uh, awaken with JP. Yeah. Do you follow him? Doesn't sound familiar. So to me awake. Now. Okay. So awaken with JP. He is. He is hilarious. He is. He's a comedian, but he did be, because he's a comedian. Obviously, his shows are all canceled right now. Right. So last Friday. What he did was he did a, his stand-up routine from his living room, broadcast it live, and I think he was charging people, which was so key, but he was charging like less than 10 bucks. And there's your one-man show. You can That's do it. it in the living room. It doesn't matter where yeah. you do it. You can do it. Absolutely. And... And there you that, go. And that's the thing, right? And again, there's no outrageous idea. And I think that's what people tend to shoot themselves down with. My idea is too outrageous, it's too out there. Tell that to Elon Musk about having you no know, electric cars take over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he did it. Definitely. And, and and now he's fucking 10 years ahead of major fucking auto manufacturers who've been around over a hundred years. All right. They, they're still way behind. They can't even catch up or the data he has now. Mm-hmm. He's, he said, you know what? You're not, not going to fuck with me. If someone's going to build batteries for me, I'll build my own phone batteries. That it was impossible. He did it. Then he said, you know what? Yeah. Okay, the government's not going to do, you know, the NASA program going to the moon anymore. Oh, you want to do private enterprise? Okay, I can get your shit up there. Failed like a motherfucker. Failed on national television. Exploding fucking rockets and all. And guess what? He's sending shit to the moon now. Right? Send his car out to the... Send his, his, his car is in space. Yes. It's insane. Yeah. It's floating out there right now. Yeah. To the point to where he decides for kicks and giggles, he wants to just bore, you know, make a hole and create a company yeah. called a Boring Company. Boring. Yep. And um, now he's actually being hired to create big-ass hoes in the ground for mm. companies. You can fucking do anything. But you got to have drive behind it. Right. And people, there's going to be a couple of stages you have to go through first. You have to go through the self doubt stage because that's what's going to happen. Then you have to go through, oh shit, they think I'm crazy stage. They're going to call you crazy because they don't understand you. They're not supposed to understand you. You understand who you are. Then from crazy, then people start saying, hey, he might have something here. Then from there, that's when you are a fucking genius. But usually you're a fucking crazy first before you're a genius. And, and that's where you have to go with your content, Tommy. Mm-hmm. You have to say, you know what? I'm crazy. My wife thinks I'm crazy. The kids think I'm crazy. All this other shit before you get to that genius mode. 
and you will figure that out. Who who's to say you don't develop a fucking studio in Colorado for a podcast? People are tired. People don't have the money to to get out the living rooms. It's cool and all, right? But people do want some full production type shit. Mm-hmm. Who says you can't get a space? Get a couple contractors, build you know a couple walls, which don't cost money, much money at all. Light it correctly, and say, "Hey, record your shit here." Yep. Because honestly, do I want to bring people to my fucking house? No. Do I have to right now? Yeah. Yeah. Can I yep. afford like a, like a Joe Rogan a fucking warehouse space to to house my? Not yet. Would I be able to to rent something? Probably so. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So there's so many things you can look at and go after and, and still be in that podcast space, but in a different level and providing a service. And that's a big thing, right? It's all about services. What service can you provide to folks? And that's something we, you, you and I need to talk about. What can we provide to folks on your end of the nation? To my end of the nation. I'm on the East Coast. You're pretty much on the West Coast. Yeah. Right? So... What can we do? What can we provide our folks? Oh, well, I'm for, I'll, I'll use you as an example. And I have loved your graphic mind. When, when I look at a lot of content you put out on Instagram, your graphics are just phenomenal. And the way you, you think of them and design them and get them out there, I would highly, highly recommend anybody if they need a graphic designer, you be the man on that. And I think oh, I've told you that before too. You have, and I, I tell you, and I've told you before. I think whenever I put something up, I think it's total shit. I don't think any of my shit's good. You know what I'm saying? I think everything I've been putting out for the past few years is just bogus pieces of shit that I just kind of put together. It takes me time. I take a lot of effort and pride into it. And I've developed like a system of where exactly how, you know, how to get it there. Mm-hmm. But to my self-imposed photos of the, all, the black backgrounds, just the white backgrounds, and just to, to have graphics in the back and me in it, or just the text and what font to use and color schemes. And do I put it all red, this coloration or green coloration on it to, to brighten it up? Even to make you know, my fucking purple, you know, fuzzy on my fucking microphone. It's, it's, it, I, you know, it's, I do it on purpose because I've always been one that's been kind of extravagant, especially with my, my, my outfits and shit like that. But my graphics is really just me. So I, people ask me, can you do a graphic for me? I can do a graphic for me. Because mm-hmm. I don't mind being crazy. If I got to do a graphic for a brand, I'm not sure how creative I can be. Because then there's rules set around it. I got to commit to your brand, your style, your liking. I got to figure out what you like, what you don't like. You know, for me, I know what I like. I know what I love. I know how far I can go with myself. So if I can ever do something of that nature to where maybe I'm running a graphic design studio and we would have a free for all of just creative people saying, you come to us, we're going to blow you away with our shit, but it can't be regulated. And respects to your brand, but let us be free. Let us be the artists that we are that you hired us for. That well, I would love. I mean, I created, what is it called? Canva? Canva, right? Canva, yeah. Yeah. So I attempted to create a uh, Canva uh, this past weekend to help promote my Instagram Live. And when it showed up on mobile it was horrible just horrible but it was a learning opportunity and that's what i was more excited about not that it sucked but it was a learning opportunity of taking i I literally did that one from scratch and tried to mess around and play around with moving fonts moving the 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 blending the family logo here and there but again it was an epic fail but it's like you were saying earlier about me, you know, spending time with iMovie. You have to, you have to play around. You have to know um, that it's going to be ugly, but just learn and keep learning and don't stop. 
No, I've been I've been messing with Instagram for a long time now. And I put up what I like. I really do. I don't I don't really put up what other people like. I put up what I like. I, I, and that's what it should be, right? And whatever social media platform you have, it should represent who you are. It shouldn't be representative of what people think you should be. If you truly want to be honest to yourself and be true to your content and be create the creative that you want to be, it should be truly who you are. And then from there, you will you will kind of curate and farm the right people who appreciate your content. I'd rather have 30,000 people follow me with a crazy ill faith and following than have a million people follow me who really are not following me. They may be following me, but they're not really following me. Right. Right. I'd rather have 30,000 active than a million non-actives. It's just a number. Right. You know, Gary Vio talks about not looking at numbers. And I got to say, he's partially correct. For the first year you're making content, don't look at numbers. Exactly. Just make content. Just fucking kill it. Once you start getting data and data starts coming in because you're consistent and you've been putting out different types of content just to test the waters and see how well they do, then that's when you need to look at data to help filter the next piece of content for the future you're going to come out with. Mm -hmm. Right? Still doesn't mean that's right or wrong. No, people go with gut feelings what they like. It changes all the time. So by the time you get your data and you adjust, people have changed the idea of what type of content they want. So still use that data as it comes through to formulate your greater plan for your content and, and, and build your content as such. I always suggest to people to, as well, record your content way in advance, get six, seven, eight, ten 10 episodes done, then put it out just like a TV show is, right? When you have a TV show, those actors are not acting anymore. They're all summer long. They were acting all summer. So at the winter time, you can have your favorite, favorite fall show. Same concept. That way, the pressure is not on to you to come up with shit week to week, right? Your graphics should be already done because you already did all the work pretty ahead of time. Now it's about pressing a button, click, 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 and you're done. And there's strictly promotion at that point. Now you're going on your promotional tour. That's how it should be. People don't take that into consideration. And they get create they get creatively challenged. Not so much blocked, but challenged of what I'll do for next week. Oh shit. And then they, they throw something together and it's fucking crazy. It's all looks like it's loosey goosey, like it's shit. There's certain people that can get away with having less quality content because personality comes through. But that's only for so long. You're going to have to upgrade your quality on top of your personality. And you have both of that together, then that's, that's, that's a great recipe for success. But you have to figure out your niche. You got to figure out what people like you for. I'm still trying to figure out what people like me for. People like my content from what I've seen so far is on stuff that I put out about current events, what's happening currently, right? So my, my, my pivot is going to be towards more of that. My pivot is going to be more to me looking at current events and speaking about maybe some, some more things. Not that I'm an expert in shit. You know, I'm just an average person. I'm going to read some things, put my opinion on it, spin it. Here you go. You know, if you agree or disagree, it's fantastic. This is what people need to learn about content. If it's educational, man, you have a hit. But you got to be consistent with that and educate your people. If it's going to be an opinion show, you better have a strong opinion, whether it's good or bad, depending on the person, and be consistent with that. Now, as you do both of those things, you're going to formulate a character, whether you want to or not. Your character for that persona is going to come out of you. Now you have to uphold that. That also takes work. That that gets exhausting. You know what I'm saying? I have to be giant nomad when I'm I'm on on film with you on podcasts. I got to be giant nomad. It's not too far off from my real life. Who I am either, though. No, no. But giant nomad's a little extra. What a lovely likes to tell me that I'm extra. (laughs) So, but those things being said, for folks, right, is. Be conscious of what you're doing and go after it. So if you're going to be educational role, educate folks. Because people will come back for educational stuff. I look at YouTube stuff for educational pieces, especially for, like I said, Final Cut Pro. It's been, it was, the video was done five years ago, four years ago. And I still go back to it if I forget something. 
I know you guys saw this video before and I remember, okay, great, boom, it's up there. Your content would be up there forever, right? Forever. Forever. If you have an opinion show, people may like that because again, people like gossip, people like opinion and shit, right? So you're gonna be a pundit show, that's fantastic. Get ready for some heat. Oh yeah. Okay, be careful with that. Now, if you just wanna try to be someone who um, is a caricature, and you just want to make funny videos and stuff like that, right? And to have blast doing kind of punk type skits, then you have to look at maybe employing and not not monetarily, but you might have to have a couple other people help you in those skits. Do you have friends, family members who's willing to get into that for no money? And if you do make it, are you going to compensate them? That's another thing, right? How long is that going to last? I have I have a couple of friends who are developing their own sitcom on YouTube. So, you know, they're writing that right now. Again, you can do a lot of stuff. You have to be consistent at it. You have to understand what you're doing. Once you have the understanding, again, it's balls to the wall. It's learning different avenues as far as content creativity. It's also about promotion and social media. You have to choose one and be real strong with it. I don't fuck with Facebook a lot, but I have been doing it since, ever since the lockdown shit has been happening. I've been more familiar with it. And I realized why I haven't fucked with Facebook because people are stupid on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, I fuck with IG a lot. I do have TikTok. I don't do Snapchat at all. Um, but IG has been my kind of my main thing. And it's tough to be everywhere. You know, it's okay for you to to know a couple of, of, of social medias and 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 really hone in and be specialist in that one. Don't worry about being in every single one because it would be very time consuming for you to try to be on Facebook, IG, Snapchat, TikTok, Firework, or whatever else is out there. But that's why I much. like that's why I like the app Hootsuite. Yeah, because where's the camera? There's the camera. Uh, because with Hootsuite, you can set up your Instagram and your Twitter and your Facebook and mm -hmm. LinkedIn. And schedule um, your different yes. content. Your your content for Facebook should be totally different than your content for LinkedIn. Same with your content and, and for I Twitter think, should yeah. be different. LinkedIn content is, is business content, right? It's, it's that's that's business Facebook. That's what LinkedIn is. Yeah. Right. So that's what people have to look at too. Is a lot of people don't use LinkedIn for that, which they should. That's a whole different demographic you're looking at. And what can happen from that, right? Because that's industry people that's on there. You may be able to find someone who likes your shit and say, hey, I got something for you, right? Well, and that's why the I'm, the one area I, I don't do enough on is, is used or utilizing Twitter. And I love LinkedIn. I love using Instagram. And I'll use them similarly to promote the podcast. But I think missing out on, on, and I see a lot of your content on Twitter. And I think that's something I need to go back to because Twitter used to be the, the you know, back in the day. It was, yeah, was and Twitter thing. still is. Like, and for and me, my, my Twitter is. account, my Twitter account is really who I really am. So I, I do put personal shit on Twitter. My, my Instagram used to be very personal. And it's just changed to Johnny Nomad presents stuff now. So it's, it's, it's a separation. I don't put my personal opinions on IG. It's really just Johnny Nomad, the characters on there, promotion, stuff like that. Now, my Twitter account, you're going to find Johnny Nomad, the real person. So if I, if I have an issue or disagreement or a lack of understanding, I'm going to put that in there. If I'm happy about something, I'll put that on Twitter as well. Um, if I'm feeling a certain type of way, you, you'll probably see it on Twitter. Um, Instagram. No, Instagram, you're going to see more um, picture perfect, you know, graphics, promotion, videos, you know, and it's going to be more towards the brand itself. And that's how I've been rolling with it. It's been okay for me. You know what I'm saying? It really has. It's weird because now I've been putting out more content. I've lost more more followers on IG. But that happens as well. You're going you're gonna to gain some and lose some. Oh, but again, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... Everyone has right now. Everyone has time to go through their their list of followers of who they're following and kind of erasing who they don't really follow. 
I'm okay mm-hmm. with that. If you're not really following me, I don't want you on there. I want active users on those accounts. I want people who are really going to engage. So for instance, just to give people insight, I posted what, three videos today, right? Four videos today. And that's for the hell of it. One video got 60, 56 views, one has 74 views, one got 56 views, the other one got 137 views. Wow. All right. The one got 137 views has the most graphics on it. That's the one that did kind of the, the flashing and the scrolling of the. Was that the first? Was that the first, the first one this morning? One. Correct. Right. Yeah. So the first yeah. one, all the graphical ones, caught people's eye. The one of me just talking, fifty six. The next one with the double cam was the second mm-hmm. highest. That one was seventy four, and the other one of me just talking with the double cam was just me talking though, not me driving was fifty six. Mm-hmm. So that tells me something, right? One, it tells me I caught people's eye with the graphical piece. So we're going to go back to that and use that a little bit more heavier in some of the other content. We're not going to super mm-hmm. saturate it, but we're going to use it. The other piece in that is the double pane is how can I go ahead and use that? I got 74 views off of that. So how can I, that was just five hours ago. So how can I go ahead and use that in a different way? Right. So whether is it me walking? Is it me talking to somebody else? You know, coming up with different ways of using that and really being creative with that and see what other light we can bring on to that. And that's what you have to do. Oh, it goes back. Yeah, it just goes back to A B testing. Yeah. You know, just absolutely. You know, even 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 if you're, you know, writing content, you know, on let's say on LinkedIn, you title it one way, and let's say you go to Facebook and you title it a different way and see right which which title of this article or this this blog I just created, which one is getting more traction. That's a it's a good way to test things. And, and, and again, same with graphics is, you know, put them on two different platforms um, and see who likes what better. Yeah. You can always find out, I mean, you can always ask, well, why do you like this one better? What, what is it that's uh, having you share this one? So I think AB testing is always a great way to help, um, you know, especially creative people and see what works best and to exactly. get to get the eyeballs uh, back to you know the website or, or whatever social media. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. We do have to uh, talk more about blending family content. Cause I do have something I want to speak to you about about adoption. Oh. So I want to save that for another time. Though I think there's another subject for another time. Yeah. That would, yeah. That's adopting. not necessarily my wheelhouse, but I would love to. But talk no, yeah, about adopting that. your bonus child. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen, yeah, I, I, I yeah, that'd be a great topic. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be going through that process. So um, definitely want to share that with you and your, your followers. Oh, that'd be awesome! Awesome. So, so yes, sir. So let's plan that. It's definitely, definitely shortly of this week. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm probably going to be free. <laughs> yeah, I think you're going to be free. So am I. Yeah. So <laughs> definitely, so sir. Man, this yeah. is a good combo, man. Yeah. I think it's got a lot of, lot of good uh, gems that were dropped for some folks I, that were I, at home. The, the thing I really like, we do play off each other very well. Um, and I, I like when you were saying, talking about people stopping, and which is so true. I mean, that's... I'm kicking myself because as I walk around these days and, you know, just wearing the hoodies and I love wearing hoodies, it would be nice to have, you know, have the blending of the family logo and some kind of saying on the back. And like I, like I was explaining, I couldn't do it because you didn't like whatever the, the graphic issue was. I was like, all right, fuck it. Even though I want, that part of the website is to have the ability not to just buy the books but to buy you know t-shirts and all that other crap and especially if it's, especially if it's you know drop ship i don't have to have that shit here so exactly yeah absolutely so we got to get in that game yeah got to up your followers we got to get you consistent let's do it all right love let's to fucking do it love, love to collaborate with you my friend Absolutely. And then I'm going to 
um, hit you up to be on my podcast, and we're going to talk about some crazy shit. I would love to talk crazy shit. Crazy shit. Yeah. Because there's a crazy world out there right now. The planet is on fire, and uh, we got to figure shit out. The thing I'm really nervous about is something my son was talking about, a, not this past weekend, but a couple of the last time he was here, is that there's so much in the media. And when you're talking about your anxiety issue, I'm just like nervous that more and more people are watching way or not just watching, but listening way too much to the news and not for for example, somebody somebody put out there on Instagram one of those um, those polls, and, and the poll was, "Do you prefer watching Netflix or Hulu?" And I responded, "What about reading a fucking book? Read a fucking <laughs> book." And obviously, he, the thing is, I was so mad he never responded after I put that. So, listen, I've learned that reading books isn't for everybody. Yeah. And if you can get your education through any outlet possible, why not? Even if it's through a film or or a podcast yeah. or an audio book, right? Mm-hmm. So some people just can't do it, you know? So my thing is educate yourself however you educate yourself. I want you to educate yourself, definitely. Right. But it doesn't have to be through my means. Yes, I'm, I'm a heavy reader. I have a bunch of books. Lovely has a shitload of books. She's mm-hmm. part of a book club. So every month she gets a fucking like two, three new books every month. And she beats the fuck out of me because she reads so fucking fast. I'm a very, very slow reader. Me too. So I'm reading my new book I'm reading is called Educated. I never can remember authors' names. I've never been in my thing. But it's called Educated. And uh, it's a true story. Right? So um, she was raised on a farm. Her father was very hella religious or so against government. And he kind of just sheltered her and she had no kind of insight about the real world out there. Um, so it's a really good book. I'm going to finish that up. Um, maybe this week. So you told me to read a book. I right, finish that up finally. And then I'll go to on to my next book that I have. Um, but dude, I got to go. I got to start cooking dinner. It's taco Mondays tonight. So. I have no idea what we're going to do for dinner. And I'm, I have no idea. No we're having tacos tonight. Oh, uh, just real quickly. So, so this is nobody can see that. I can't see that. Shit. It's all bright. And, it's just white, like you. Anyway, it's, it's my it's my Amazon account. Okay, and it's all these books that I just hold, and then eventually I'll. I'll no, what you gotta do order. is get the Read app. It's called Goodreads. Good chap, Go read. Oh, Goodreads. Goodreads. Oh, I yeah, yeah. Get that. So then you can. Stash all your books in there. Right now, I have my books. I have want to read 318 books that I want to read. And I've read so far 35 books. I just I just put up out of, out of my bookshelf is an old book. And I looked at it and it was it's over 10 years old when this book came out. It's the. It's the, it's called the one minute entrepreneur. And I'm like, it's an, it's one. an easy read. I'm almost done with it. But the next book I want to read, actually, oh crap. It should be this one. This is the next book you should read. Who is that by? This is by Brandon, Brendan King. Huh. Okay. Great book. He also has an audio as well. I actually have it on both. And he gives insight how he got to his one million followers. He did his tests. Widen the window. This is my next, my, I, she's coming on this week. Elizabeth Stale. I mean, this fucking book. I have God to damn, research. She do? I, uh, she's a, let's see. Th- training your brain and body to thrive during stress and recovery from trauma. So she, well, I've that, been trying to reschedule book, her. That book is thick as shit. That's gonna cause you stress and trauma. I know, and I'm gonna, and she's a fucking PhD. PhD. She's she's coming on the Sh- podcast to promote that book the again, book. Should that book? I think that shit. Is. Jesus Christ! What the fuck? Does know, she had to I, say so much. I know. Uh, my pages. 
How many pages that shit? That's what I'm looking. Uh, four hundred and seventy-three. Well, those. Why are does it look bigger than any other book I've seen in my fucking life? So, how big is the font? Um, it's not that big. It's small. Font. Ten, ten. She wrote a lot of fucking words. Then. Oh, she's a fucking PhD. Oh, all right, here you go. This section, this section, just I'm holding right here. Yeah. Are the notes? The so notes. All, all, all the. Little things that she talks about throughout this book. I gotta, I gotta go through this book because okay, she's shut on, the fuck up. She's on yeah. the podcast Wednesday night. When this Wednesday, next Wednesday, this Wednesday. You drink? You're gonna read that shit by Wednesday? I'm not gonna read it. I'm gonna go through it and just start picking out topics and questions, and, and hopefully she'll be a good interview. Hopefully she'll be one of those people that just. I hope she quotes to talk. chapter 16, the chapter you haven't read yet. Yeah, exactly. And you fuck don't know you. what the fuck. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> she didn't say, yeah, chapter 16, page 7, paragraph 3. And you're going to have post-it notes everywhere except for that fucking chapter. I can't uh-huh. fucking wait. I can't wait. My whole, my whole computer is going to have all these post-it notes all around it. Dude, she's going to blow your mind. I know. I'm she's nervous. She's smarter than you. Oh, she's way fucking smarter. She, Both of us yeah. together. I, I don't know about that. I'm pretty I'm pretty genius. I'm, I'm pretty fucking genius. <laughs> I'm a smart motherfucker. <laughs> yes, you are. And a sexy one at that. I'm fucking fine as hell. I'm sexy as yeah. hell. You got that yeah. right. Yeah. I'm a sexy motherfucker. Motherfucker. Fuck your mother. That's right. Shit. All right. Go cook dinner. I got to cook dinner. People are looking at me. The family's starving. Yeah, I got to figure Dog out what's barking. Dinner. I got so one we more. Start it. Let's got start one more it. It's taking long enough. Now they want to try to help me fucking cook. There's lovey's over there reading. I'll be right there. Let me just finish my podcast, please. Jesus Christ. I can't fucking. Do you see how they talk? Yeah. They have no fucking respect for the no man. No fucking house. respect. I know. It's bullshit. Fucking kids. God damn. Tell him, tell him, fucking eBay. You're gonna, That's, you're gonna put them exactly. on eBay. I'm gonna put you not. I'm gonna put you in the black market, and see how much yeah. I'm not gonna get for you. Because then they see your picture and say, <laughs> "Fuck no, I don't want it." How much I'm not gonna get for you? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's true. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna say, "Fuck off, get the fuck off the web." Exactly. See the anxiety is happening right now. Everyone's going crazy right now. They need, they need food. They need consumption. Like the fat asses that we are. Yeah. So. All right. I'll hit you up, dude, tomorrow. Let's figure out our next uh, shit. And, okay. Um, um, yeah, she's going to have fun Wednesday. <laughs> Thank you. Fuck you. Thank you. <laughs> we out. Peace.